Hello and welcome to this tutorial on the IP packet. Specifically, we're going to be looking at IP version 4, um, but keep in mind IP version 6 also exists. You may have heard by now that IP version 4, all of the available address space is, is exhausted. It's been allocated and there's no more left. And so IP version 6 was created and is gaining popularity now. So for now, we're going to focus on 4, but keep in mind IP version 6 is something we'll get to later. So what we have here is IP, and IP is a layer 3 protocol, meaning it's located at layer 3 of the OSI model, or the internet level of the TCP IP stack, and this is a routed protocol. So first we have the header, and this is known as the IP header, and within it there are a bunch of different fields with a lot of information, and that information is used by routers to figure out what it should do with this packet, how it should handle it. And in a minute we're going to jump into some of those fields and take a closer look. After the header is the data, and this is the user data we're looking to send across the network. So these two things together make up the IP packet. So you may refer to both of them as the IP packet, or you may sometimes hear the IP header, um, which would just be the header of this packet. So keep in mind you can refer to it in two different ways. Notice there's no trailer. Unlike Ethernet, which has a, a header and a trailer, there's no trailer here on the IP packet. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into the different fields of the IP header. This is our IP header, and we've stripped off the data portion of it, so we can focus in on the fields within the header. And so the header is typically 20 bytes in size, and that's the minimum size. It can go up to 60 bytes, and usually it would uh, increase in size if there were some more fields added to the header, and they're often referred to as options. They're not used very often, and they're not illustrated here. I'll touch upon them again in a minute, but just note if you see an IP header which is bigger than 20 bytes, there's a reason why. It can, it can grow. So let's go through some of these, these fields. You don't have to know all of them right away. I'll point out which ones are most relevant to you at this point in, in learning networking. But eventually, it's really important to know all these. They make a lot of sense, and they help your understanding of, of how IP works that much better. So the version field is pretty straightforward. It, it specifies which version of the IP protocol is in use. And so typically now, this is version 4. Again, we mentioned earlier that version 6 is also available. So that's where you find your version. The header length field defines the length of the IP header um, and including any optional fields that may be added to the header. So this will tell you how big it is, actually. The next field is the differentiated services field, the DS field, but I've also put on there the TOS field, and that stands for type of service. Type of service was the original name of this field, and its use has been uh, somewhat changed or, in fact, evolved into differentiated services. We don't get too much into um, uh, this field uh, in this particular uh, track of study, but this is related to quality of service, uh, QoS. You may have heard that term before, and that relates to um, treating some packets with more care than other packets. For instance, if you have voice over IP or streaming video, um, and it needs to be treated uh, with better care than, let's say, you know, random Internet traffic. Um, this field here uh, gives us some options to uh, differentiate how we treat certain types of, of traffic. Okay, so moving on, we next have the packet length, and that identifies the length of the entire packet, so not only the header, but also the data that follows it. Okay, so that's where we get our total length. The next three fields, the identification, the flags, and the fragment offset, all have to deal, deal with the topic of fragmentation. Okay, and fragmentation is pretty much when an IP packet has to be broken up into smaller pieces in order to be successfully transmitted across a network. These fields enable the packet to be reassembled properly after it's been chopped up. So for now, just keep in mind those three fields all deal with fragmentation. The next field is pretty relevant to um, some of our studies on the CCENT and CCNA, and that's the time to live, or sometimes referred to as the TTL. That's a value, and it's used to prevent routing loops in a network. And we jump into the details of that later in, in another tutorial, but just keep in mind the TTL field is pretty important to us now, and, and it saves networks from getting too congested with packets that never stop routing. 
After that is the protocol field. And that's a pretty simple field. It, it enables us, it, well, rather, it enables the, the IP header to identify what is in its data. So usually that's just a number, and that number corresponds to uh, another protocol. So for instance, it could signify TCP or UDP, for example, and it's telling whoever's re receiving it, hey, I'm an IP packet, and I'm carrying uh, a protocol, and this is the protocol. It's TCP, for example. After that is a header checksum. And you know, in the beginning, I mentioned um, there's no trailer um, to the IP packet. And so, uh, as you know, in Ethernet, the, the frame check sequence is located in the trailer. Well, here, it's located in the header. And this is a value, and the FCS value is stored here in the header checksum. And this is only used to determine if any errors have occurred in the IP header. It doesn't check the integrity of the data it carries, so keep that differentiation in mind. It's only concerned with the IP header itself, so it's like a self-check. And then after that are the two obvious fields that we've touched upon in some of the routing examples, the source IP address and the destination IP address. Those are both 32-bit IP addresses, and the source is who's sending it, and the destination is the recipient or the intended recipient of the IP packet. Now, if we were going to uh, talk a little bit about the options, if there were option uh, fields added here, they would come after the destination IP address. And then uh, if there are no options or if there are options after this, so if we were just to, to look down um, on the diagram, everything below the destination IP address, that's where your data would be. Okay, and so that's it. Those are all the fields of the IP header. Um, keep in mind the version field, the time to live field, and the source and destination IP address field. Those come up most often in this level of network administration. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.